Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, this is The Glimpse Inside. And what today we're doing, yeah, we're using one of my favorite materials, Baltic Birch. We're gonna laminate five sheets together. We're gonna make my take on a modern phone holder for a desk or a table, you name it. I'm using it at work. I needed something to display the phone to help get a cord up there to charge it and have it displayed where I need it. So check this out. Come with me and we'll build, let's go. All right, so it all begins with some scrap pieces of Baltic birch I had lying around. This is three quarters of an inch thick. I ripped it down to roughly seven inches in width, and now I'm measuring it, and then I'm cutting it into exact squares. There really, it just doesn't matter. I just need five pieces that I'm gonna laminate up with some PVA glue, which is a simple wood glue, but I'm gonna try something a little different this time. I'm using black diamond pigments, which are typically used in epoxy to make them various different colors. I'm gonna try it in some wood glue here to see what happens. And the results were, you know, they were just okay. Uh, the wood glue joint is so tight, uh, as you see me here gluing it together, it's such a tight bond that it doesn't necessarily show through once the piece is finalized. Um, there's a couple sections when this is all said and done that you are able to see this color and it's very subtle. So if I'm going for subtlety, I'll say it worked really well. Uh, however, I'm not sure I'm gonna actually use those pigments in wood glue again, but for now it worked pretty well. And uh, yeah, I can't really complain too much. All right, so after roughly three to four hours, the glue is dry enough to go ahead and take it to the table salt and clean up those glue lines. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect here because, you know, perfection basically is, holds, holds back progress, right? So, but you try to make it as nice as possible. But at this point, I'm gonna take it over to the bandsaw. But before I do that, I'm gonna draw just kind of a rough shape, a rough line that I think is gonna work to support the phone in its horizontal and its vertical state. I run it through the blade once, realize that the blade is too thick to make the whole entire pass that way, back it out, and then now onto the random, no, this is a spindle sander, and we're gonna go ahead and clean up these edges here with a two inch diameter drum, and I realize that I need to make more of a channel where the phone's gonna sit, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this drum with a three quarters of an inch drum, and this is gonna give me kind of a nice little groove you see there for the phone to rest. Moving over here to my armor tool bench with using some of these really handy clamps. This tool bench has come in handy in this shop so much. I'm gonna link down below actually where you can find all of armor products. Check in the description for this. I just can't speak highly enough about what they offer. It really has changed my workflow. But after using some of those rounded over, uh, you know, handles to get a nice curved edge with sanding, if you don't have those, which are offered by Rockler, you could simply use a simple paper towel. Uh, I use this trick quite a bit. I wrap up sandpaper in a paper towel, preferably the flexible sandpaper, and this does wonders in terms of sanding curved surfaces, as you can see. Uh, I love this trick, so use it in your shop and uh, you won't regret it, I promise. Okay, now to give the piece just a little visual interest, I wanna trim it up a little bit from top to bottom with a taper from bottom to top, actually. And what we're doing is I'm using the stop blocks to my advantage here. I'm actually positioning the stop block to where it raises the edge of one surface. And as you can see, as I run it through the blade, it's gonna cut off roughly about a five to seven degree angle. I do it again on the other side and then come over to the disc sander and I'm gonna go ahead and sand it flush be it the fact that there was a little bit of material left over. Now I could have done this on the bandsaw, but I like using my table saw as often as possible. And I found out that this was no problem being the fact I'm just gonna sand it flush here. So I wanna see more of those Baltic birch edges in the front. So I'm taking a paint stick, I'm raising the surface up by about two to three degrees. It didn't reveal as many edges as I like. So I'm using my other little trusty sled here that cuts multiple angles. I set it to roughly a 15 degree angle and check this out, yep. Love how that looks. Hey guys, didn't see you there. So on YouTube, if you like a channel and you like what they do and you wanna never miss one of their videos, there's something you have to do and it's this, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Of course, I invite you to subscribe every video, of course, but do this too. So no lie, that bell has been in front of my shop for about four years and not once have I thought to use it to incorporate it into an illustration on why you should ring the bell as well. But either way, I'm moving on. So the piece that was cut off, that was left over from trimming the front to expose the edges, I'm using on the back. Reason being, well, I think it creates a little bit better visual interest and also all edges are visible on all sides of the piece and that was kind of the look I was going for. 
All right, with the blade back to 90, we're gonna bust out the cross cut sled one more time. And this time I'm gonna use its stop blocks as a method to make a dado cut that's gonna receive the cord. That's gonna keep the cord up and charging the phone and get it out of the way as well. So you can see there, multiple stop block system where the piece can go back and forth. I'm gonna raise the saw blade up to about one inch. I'm gonna make a pass. I'm gonna move the piece over just slightly, make another pass, and then butt it up against the last block. And now I have the groove that I was looking for. I'm gonna show you here. But there's one other thing. The part that goes into the phone is a little bit thicker than that groove, so we're gonna drill roughly a half inch hole that's gonna go half of the way down, maybe about, maybe a half an inch as well. And then on the bottom of the piece, we need to cut a little bit of space for the cord to run through as well. Mount it back up in my armor tool bench, and then I'm gonna sand it flush. I found that the sandpaper wasn't really working all that well, so I CA glued some to a little flexible sanding strip, and that seemed to work really well. So to help me break all the edges, I'm going back to these sanding attachments that Rockler sells. Actually, I'm gonna link Rockler down below. You can find them there as well. And they actually come in handy a lot. The paper towel method is great, but they, I actually go to these Rockler rounded over sanding attachments a lot, so check them out. Now on the finishing, I'm using a wipe on poly that I made myself. I took some gloss polyurethane with some boiled linseed oil and some mineral spirits, equal parts of each, and put them in a squirt bottle. And I use this stuff quite a bit. I did three coats of this and here's the reveal. All right, there you go, guys. You can see the cord is out of the way. The phone is displayed. Of course, you know, displaying some of my favorite content. But I do want to know your thoughts on, one, the design. Is Baltic Birch a little too much sometimes? Or is it okay in this application? I love it. I think it's fantastic. But I know it can be, you know, plywood lines or plywood edges can be a little bit divisive. Uh, so I want to know your opinion on what you think of this. This is fantastic. I actually, it was a conversation starter at work. Some people saw it on the desk and were saying, hey, wh what exactly is that thing doing? What's, what's it for? And then I show them and they think, ah, that was, that was pretty cool. So guys, tell me what you think. I love to hear a conversation down below. And of course, I got to thank my sweet daughter for being the backdrop on my phone, doing her best Michael Jackson impression. <laughs> guys, thanks again for watching. I very much appreciate you being here. And thanks again. You know, I tell you, I absolutely love this little thing. It turned out fantastic. Of course it did. It's Baltic Birch, right? Everything does with that stuff. Anyway, guys, I very much appreciate you being here. I do want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. I'm going to list them on the screen right here. You all know who you are. Thank you so much, everyone. And if you want to donate to the channel and help us in our cause here, all the links are down below. Of course, no pressure at all, but very much appreciated. And of course, guys, y'all rock. Thank you so much, guys. This has been A Glimpse Inside. My name is Chris, and we'll see you on the next project. And until then, have a great time out in your shops or whatever you do. Just get out there and make something. See you later.